Hi everyone in Sydney and also those uh, attending remotely. My name is Kaming. I'm a graduate student at the University of California, Berkeley. Before I start talking about cosmic rays, I wanted to do a bit of advertisement for my morning talk, which is also uh, about astronomy. It's on a very fast inference algorithm for binary microlensing for basically uh, isoplanet discovery and characterization. So in this talk on uh, cosmic rays, uh, it's also all about the speed and also about the performance. So basically we're using deep learning to do cosmic ray rejection and it turns out to be uh, orders of magnitude faster and also performs better than previous state of the art. Um, so, so to start with, here is a Hubble, here's a uh, image of a galaxy cluster taken by Hubble. Uh, uh, you can see that apart from these galaxies, these uh, fluffy lo looking galaxies, you also have a whole bunch of these little dots. Those are not stars. Those are actually cosmic rays. Uh, this is the same image which the cosmic rays removed. Much cleaner now. Um, so uh, this is basically cosmic ray rejection. So what, what is cosmic ray? Cosmic rays are uh, energy, basically high energy particles that's able to penetrate the telescope and hitting the director, detector directly which leads to the exact flux. And the, the problem is, is a lot more severe in space because basically because of Earth's radiation belt that contains uh, a, a really a lot of charged energy particles. This creates a lot of trouble for Hubble. Um, so uh, I'll first mention the, um, the, the existing approaches for cosmic ray rejection. Uh, the, the most straightforward way is to take a sequence of exposures at the same part of the sky, compute the median image, which is, which is free of cosmic rays, uh, because cosmic rays hit, hit random places uh, at different times. And you can subtract the median image from each individual image. And uh, from the difference image, you can take a threshold. Uh, whatever is in the single image, but not in the median image, you think of that as the cosmic ray. So this is not perfect. For example, uh, if you have lots, loads of cosmic ray hits uh, that can have a, ha happen for Hubble for a very long exposure, then sometimes the pixels, pixels get hit by more than once. Uh, but what's, what's more, the most fundamental challenge is that it only looks for things, it looks for things that are only in one frame. It basically looks for transient objects. So if you're someone who's interested in transient transient astronomy, supernova, variable stars, then they're 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 all masked up as cosmic rays. So you're you're, um, you're losing your, your target. So in those cases, uh, people need a single frame cosmic ray rejection algorithm. Um, those are there are a lot of algorithms for that, uh, including ours, which is also a single frame algorithm. And the, the state of the art, I would say, is LA cosmic, which finds cosmic rays by looking at sharp edges. So uh, in panel A, you're seeing parts of a Hubble image. Uh, what it what our cosmic does is that it applies the Laplace kernel, which is shown to the uh, top right. It does convolution with this kernel. Uh, and the Laplace kernel is basically four in the center and minus one to the four size. So if, uh, if, so it'll have a very, very high response at uh, sharp transitions, like sharp edges, but if, if for, but for smooth, smooth, uh, smoothly varying structures, it would have, uh, it would have less response. Uh, so this involves a couple of steps in, involving subsampling and uh, sampling back. But eventually, you you will end up with an image like panel D, where the cosmic ray is still there, but the smooth structure has been removed. And there, you could take a threshold to create a binary cosmic ray mask. So the the problem with Hubble is that Hubble is not within our atmosphere, so the stars would look uh, very sharp because they're, uh, yeah. So the the stars would look very sharp, but the uh, the cosmic rays are also very sharp. And uh, just by using Laplace transformations naively, you you uh, tend to mi mi uh, misidentify a lot of stars and cosmic rays. 
So LA Cosmic basically come up with a heuristics for this. It says that the stars, although they're sharp, they're symmetrical. So LA Cosmic basically says that whatever is sharp but not symmetrical is, is cosmic gray. And it, it, I, I would say that it does a great job most of the time. Um, for example, here is an example from the LA Cosmic paper. Um, there, uh, I mean, it's basically doing a pretty good job uh, in these very sparse fields. Uh, it's also an image of a galaxy cluster without stars. Stars will be the most problematic case as we see uh, later. The, um, the biggest trouble I would say is actually it's very slow. So just for just to do cosmic ray rejection for one single Hubble image would take around half a minute or a minute on your laptop. So good time for you to get a coffee. Um, and secondly, because it's based on edge detection, it's got a lot of trouble. If the cosmic ray is is, is very extended, that uh, makes it look uh, rather smooth. And also when stars get crowded, they don't look symmetrical anymore. Um, they're not well separated. So that's the hardest case for our cosmic. And also the way that it that it replaces its cosmic ray pixels is basically by taking the median of the surrounding pixels. There's definitely, we could do, but definitely do better than that. So here's deep CR. Our approach is actually based on image segmentation in computer vision, which is basically segments and image into different parts. The fundamental task is to classify uh, on the pixel level and uh, ask whether a pixel is a pixel of a cat, a tree, a sky, or grass. In the case of uh, cosmic ray rejection, we are basically doing a binary classification asking each pixel whether it is a cosmic ray or not. So how do we do image segmentation with uh, deep learning? The, the approach uh, that, um, the popular approach is the UNET. So here what we're using is a modification of the UNET. The input image is to the left and the output image is the uh, segmentation, binary segmentation mask. So uh, I, I'd say that the towards near the top of the, the unit, um, pixel level features are being extracted, but towards the, uh, when you get deeper, you're, you're, you'll be able to extract uh, semantic level um, information, for example, whether a, whether a uh, something is a galaxy or star or cosmic ray. And I do want to point out the similarity here that uh, you, so comlets are also convolutions. Uh, cosmic is convolution, but it's very, but it's only a one layer convolution. Um, so it does not have ability to access semantic level uh, features, which gives us the uh, advantage. So DeepCR is basically a combination of two independent networks. This is the first network, the mask network. Uh, the second in-painting network takes in both the image and the segmentation mask, feeds into the second network, uh, and predict the missing pixel values. So I do want to point out something interesting that we observed. So we took a look at the kernels learned in the first layer. And this filter that you, you're seeing here, it looks exactly like the Laplace kernel. So DeepCR is not only able to learn the Laplace transformation, but it's also able to learn all sorts of filters that creates features that's useful for DeepCR to make, to distinguish between, basically between uh, stars and cosmic rays. And here is uh, how DeepCR perform in a similar image that we just saw for LA Cosmic. Uh, the, the performance are similar for DeepCR and for, for LA Cosmic by visual inspection. But as I said, the, this is not the hardest task. The hardest task is when you have a field full of stars, for example, resolve uh, nearby galaxies. Uh, as you see, the, so here we have three examples. Um, we have the ground truth to, at the third column. And for our cosmic, the SIG clip is basically a threshold. Uh, 10 is a more liberal threshold. 
So in most, almost all cases, DeepCR was able to find all the cosmic rays uh, while not misidentifying stars and cosmic rays. But in this case, uh, so DeepCR misses uh, some pixels, but it finds the, the, the thing. However, our cosmic misses uh, this entirely this, this segment of cosmic ray. The thing that it identifies is actually a, a star. And here our cosmic misses completely this large and smooth cosmic ray because it's based on edge detection, basically. And here, uh, here is interesting. So uh, this is actually a star and one pixel is nearby pixel is hit by the cosmic ray. And uh, amazingly, DeepCR Deep was able to figure out that one single pixel, but uh, our cosmic um, thinks that the entire thing is a cosmic ray. So here are some rock curves. Uh, we were basically able to achieve 100% detection rates at very low false positive rates. Uh, for these harder tasks, uh, which is a third um, rock curve you're seeing, we could achieve something like 95% detection rates compared to our cosmic, which is capped at uh, around 75%. So a lot of improvements for, for this. And also for the speed. So on GPU, DeepCR is at least two orders of magnitude faster than our cosmic. Uh, although admittedly, there is not a GPU imp implementation for uh, our cosmic. So uh, if it takes, uh, this, so this is, I, I would say that this is a really good solution for the next generation of larger scale service such as uh, Rubin or previously known as LSSC, which, uh, which has lots of, really lots of images and require the cosmic rejection algorithm to be really scalable. So some uh, metrics for inpainting performance. So obviously it was the semantic features. We were able to inpaint galaxies and uh, structured objects much better than non-neural uh, algorithms. And, um, also much faster. So then how do we build training sets? Um, so basically there are two ways to build training sets. For Hubble, we could use the, Hubble has loads of archival data that has image se sequences. So we could do the, do the median image subtraction method to automatically label uh, the images as co uh, with cosmic ray labels. Alternatively, um, and also because doing so is very hard for ground-based stuff, doing image subtraction is very hard uh, on Earth because of the variable atmosphere conditions. So what we could do is we could uh, put the cosmic rays in dark frames in clean images, basically simulating images. Uh, uh, and we can get the cosmic ray mask for free from the dark frame because there's, there's nothing. And if there's anything, it's a cosmic ray. So to train the inpainting net, we first uh, mask out the original cosmic rays in each images. We apply one to eight uh, additional cosmic ray masks uh, and ask the network to learn to reproduce those pixel values. And the reason that I included uh, more than one mask is to increase, to allow the network to learn more efficiently. Uh, finally, uh, DeepCR is on GitHub and we have a pip installable package. Uh, API is very simple. There's a drop, drop in replacement for our cosmic. We have a trained model available for uh, Hubble ACS, and we are looking at other instruments as well. So I'll leave the summary here, and uh, if things work 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 well, I'll be able to take questions uh, online. Thank you. <laughs>